Hello and welcome back to 88 Angel Street yet again for the second Are We There Yet video where I take you behind the scenes and show you all the itsy bitsy little details that most people never think about but good architects and builders spend much too much time worrying about. Let's go. Here we are in the upper ground floor bathroom that I've shown you before with the skylight set out on a 300 grid and let's start talking about this mirror. Now, I want to tell you about the two fundamentally different kinds of detailing. You may have heard of additive and reductive sculpture. Pre-modern Art Deco Victorian detailing is essentially additive, where you have a flat wall and you add on your cornice and architrave and decoration, etc. We're going the opposite way with negative detailing to achieve a lovely, clean, flat finish at the end. Now this poor mirror looks a little bit sad here on its lonesome, but uh, let me tell you about the vision for all its friends. This is actually the door of a cabinet which is fully recessed into the extent of the wall because space is at a premium here. There will be mirrors, fixed mirrors either side that finish flush with the mirror and the tiles. They will be delineated from the tiles with a little 3mm aluminium trim which talks to this aluminium angle down here, which is actually serving not only as a trim, but as a handle for the mirror. Because if you have a touch catch on this sort of mirror, you get fingerprints, which is no good. The mirror then continues underneath a floating vanity, which has an LED strip underneath as a nightlight, so you don't blind yourself when you're going for a pee in the middle of the night. And it then terminates over here at the shower screen. The idea being that the mirror extends seamlessly along and then lifts off the wall as a frameless clear shower screen and that is achieved with this recessed angle. The frameless glass will come out and be cut around the stone vanity bench which will also form a uh, shampoo shelf in the shower and it will all be nice and neat and clean. It's all drawn at one-to-one -one detail and I really should do something different on Friday nights, but there you go. All the other metal fixtures and fittings in the house are also brushed stainless steel for three reasons. Firstly, most tapware is chrome-plated brass. Now, brass tapware gets a kind of green, gunky corrosion in over time. It doesn't happen with stainless steel. It always remains clean and clear inside. Secondly, the chrome plating on brass tapware is full of nasty heavy metals, chromium, lead, arsenic, a lot of the contamination in Sydney soil is from old electroplating factories, that sort of thing. Uh, best avoided, stainless steel is 100% recyclable. And finally, the stainless steel doesn't scratch because it's already brushed, looks and feels great, is durable, and we love it. Now, one of my pet hates is exhaust fan covers. They collect dust, they stick out, they rattle, they're ugly, they're plastic, no good. So what do we do? We made our own. We took stainless steel tile insert drain covers, which we've got in the showers here, and we've used them upside down, recessed into the ceiling, like we have up here, and we're going to put plasterboard into the surface. So all you have is this nice square shadow line in the ceiling, which gives you enough surface area for really good extraction, big silent motors built into the walls and uh, perfect, easy to clean, minimalist luxury. So the bathtub is a solid resin, no hollow acrylic around here. We've even got a solid resin plug, which is a nice flat finish. So if you happen to sit on the plug hole when you're having a bath, you don't get a nasty little sharp thing up your bum. Basin's also solid resin, love the shape of this basin. It is gonna be mounted here in this uh, recess, which is cut, will be cut out exactly to fit seamlessly. And the um, color and texture of this resin just goes so perfectly with the marble. Really feels like it's all part of the same piece. Best thing about these basins is that uh, if they, see so this is one we've had out for fitting, it's got all sorts of grubby fingerprints on it. If uh, you can't get these off with your normal cleaning methods, sandpaper. and not leave a mark. So impossible to stain these things because you can just sand it back to a seamless finish. Oh, there you are. 
So the door handles are also a brushed stainless steel. We've chosen one with a nice clean design which uh, matches our tower rails but also has a curve which feels very natural and comfortable in the hand. Stainless steel hinges with ball bearings for years of creak free closing. Finally, the much anticipated sandblasted glass ensuite wall is now in, craned in through the glass roof. Pre drilled holes here, ready to accept, luckily they're in the right place, ready to accept our stainless steel tower rails. We couldn't find a good off the shelf solution for fixing them, so we've had these little stainless steel buttons custom made, fitted to a thread. We've tapped the thread into the back of the fixing lug of the tower rail, so that will sit neatly on there with just the button on the other side. And you might ask, why do we make it so hard for ourselves? I don't know. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that little insight into the late night depravity of architecture. Next time, we're gonna show you the heart of the home, the modern gathering place where it all comes together, the kitchen. See you then, thanks for watching.